Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Pastor. This is February the 27th of 2024. Good morning to you and I trust you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful day. By the way, I have my hot cup of coffee right here. Looking forward to enjoying it and I have my copy of the Word of God open to the book of Acts in chapter 9. The book of Acts chapter 9 is where we're at this morning. So please open up your copy of the Word of God and follow along with us as we will be reading that in just a few moments. While you are turning there, let's turn our attention to the bad dad joke. Anybody want my old copies of Chiropractic Weekly? I've got loads of back issues. Okay. We'll put that aside, and again, I trust you're having a wonderful day, and I hope it only gets better from here. If I understood the forecast properly, which I believe I did, 64 degrees here in northern Michigan, and to stop and think, it's still February, we're looking at temperatures in the 60s, but beware, because that same forecast is calling for snow tomorrow. So, such is the weather in Michigan, and it is getting very, very close to that 9 o'clock hour. And so we're going to go ahead, bow our heads, bow our hearts before our Heavenly Father. Let's go ahead and let's pray together. Glorious Heavenly Father, thank you for a beautiful day. As we begin to look into this day as we begin to go about our daily activities. Father, we want to take the time to submit ourselves to you, to understand that this day is indeed all about you. And Lord, we pray that you would guide us, that you would direct us throughout this day. We pray that all of our actions our thoughts, our words would be pleasing in your sight. Father, thank you for the warm temperatures that we are about to enjoy. But Lord, again, this day is about you. Help us, Father, to seek your will. Help us to seek it. Help us to see the opportunities that are around us to serve you. Father, help us to seek your glory in all things. Father, as we stand before your throne, we do want to pray for your people. And as we've said many, many times, you know our limitations. You know those that are physically limited. And Lord, we lift them into your presence. Many of them experience pain on a constant basis. For some, it's just plain a physical limitation. Some, it may be an illness. Father, you know each one. And Lord, many, many times, it is our limitations that provide us the opportunity to serve. Father, work in and through us in spite of, and yes, in many cases, because of our limitations. In our weakness, we ask that you would show yourself strong. And thank you for choosing to use such people as us. Father, we come into your presence with thanksgiving, with joy, gladness. And Father, you, you are our hope and our security in the world in which we live. Thank you for the privilege we have of opening up your word this morning. We pray that your spirit would use it in our hearts and in our lives. Encourage, strengthen, and embolden your people. And help us to grow ever closer 
to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask these things in his precious and holy name. Amen. As I mentioned, we are in Act chapter 9. Let's begin reading, shall we? And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined a round about him a great light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men that which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that I, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight for, forthwith, and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened, then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem, and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their lying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night, and let him down by a, the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, 
he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him, and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them, coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and disputed against the Grecians, but they were about to slay him. Which, when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea, and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea, and Galilee, and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydia. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years, and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise, and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt at Lydia and Saran saw him and turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber, and for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the wid widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth, and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord, and it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon the Tanner. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Beloved, again, I trust you're going to have a super, super day. I, have, I believe I've mentioned it before, but we see the appearance of a gentleman by the name of Barnabas. He is one of my heroes of the faith. Certainly, we've all heard of Paul. Remember, it was Barnabas that inter introduced him to the disciples that were at Jerusalem. You wonder what this world would be like without men like Barnabas. Be a Barnabas today. Be faithful today. And do not, do not allow yourself to become someone else's excuse for turning away from the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember, God loves you very, very much. We do as well. And until tomorrow, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.